Welcome back everybody. So following on from part one, we have now created our fluid effects um, as well as our rock here. So now what we need to do is we need to actually add in a couple of UV um, textures and add in our material. So first what you want to do is you want to come off this and you want to add in a delete. So first of all, select that and you want to come up to groups and you want to delete the surface and this will delete everything that's to do with the surface which is our fluid what we want to do is now duplicate this and you want to come up to the operation and you want to delete non-selected so we got one with just the rock and one with just the fluid now what i want to do is i want to quickly add in a attribute delete and I'm going to come in between merge and also the transform. And I come to the points. I'm going to change it. And I'm going to make it capital C D. So we're deleting the color attributes. So we don't have this kind of blue effects coming along here, which is what we need. So now we need to add in a couple of UVs. So we're going to add in UV unwrap uh, for both. Uh, we're going to do that and we're going to start with the rock we're going to just make sure the materials open we're also going to add in a uv project and just to view this for the moment we're going to add in a uv quick shader so if we view this now we've got a bit of a shade there everything seems to be going off a bit weird though seems like it stretches here and it's fine on this one side which we are going to change now. So don't need to do anything with the unwrap. So if we come to the UV project, um, you'll see that the texture is all weird here and there. Um, we don't want that. So to change that, we are going to actually come up to the top here. And we're going to change this to polar. So at the moment, I think that'll do. But I'm going to just quickly change the scale to 1, 1, 1, and the translate to 0, 0, 0 just so everything is dead center and we haven't got any too big ones or too small so yeah for the rock that's perfect and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and paste it over and it's going to do that and for this you can't really you can see just the texture just a little bit it's nothing crazy but um, I'm just checking making sure there's no stretching happening and from what I've noticed so far it doesn't seem like there is so I think I'm quite happy with the way that is we can also change the uh, projection you can change it to whatever so that one's also quite good I don't see any stretching in that uh, there is a little bit here so I might leave it on polar so yep that's perfectly fine we now need to add in our materials so material one and material two so move that on there, and we're going to move that one on there as well. So now we need to actually add in material. I have made some presets, and we're just going to quickly go through them. So for the gold texture, I actually added in a texture of a gold plate, um, like seamless plate, which you can do. You can just go onto Google, add it in. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to carry on with the basic fluid. So all I did was I brought in the basic fluid and I just changed some colors so the reflection here I made it kind of like an aqua kind of blue um, for the subsurface this was unticked so I've ticked that and I've made it a very bright aqua and for the diffuse I changed it and I made it a bit more darker of a darker blue and if we just go back onto our tutorial um, we come to the material for the fluid and we add in our basic liquid there. I'm also going to select the UV quick shader and I'm going to just hide it, bypass it. Now if we show that, we've got a bit of a blue thing here going on. It doesn't look great so far, it's just a blue, but we can change that when we actually go into the render. So for the rock look, I actually imported some textures here um, so the basic color the roughness and I also added in the bump 
And I think I added in the um, normal as well. So the normal and the bump there. Displacement, I actually added in a texture there as well. So the, where I got this from was actually from the same place that we um, can get all the, the HDRIs and the textures and the models. So if you come over to texturehaven.com, they have a bunch of free stuff here. You can then go on to browse textures and you can look for rocks. So I just looked for one that was fairly dark and wasn't too crazy. So I think I went for this one, Rock 5. So I just clicked that and then you can go in and you can actually download everything for it for all maps. So you got the displacement, you got the fuse, you got the roughness, the normal and so on and so forth. So if we minimize that now, all I did was I imported the main texture. So the diffuse texture into the basic color, the roughness. I added in a rough JPEG. Also for the bump and the normal map, I just added the normal and the bump and the displacement. So if you come to the surface now and you've downloaded that and you've done all that, you can then change the color in. So if we just come back out of this really, really quickly and jump in, and I'm just going to merge these together just so we can see it in the render. I'm also going to put in a null, which we're going to use as the output. So out. What I have noticed is the quick shader is still on the um, rock, so I've just disabled that now. And we haven't added a material onto this, so we're going to actually add that material on now. I have it as concrete, and if we just bring that in now, we now have our models textured. So now we can see the materials are actually applied to the fluid and the rock itself. We can now go on to actually rendering, so I'm just going to view the camera first see what position we're in which was fine and I'm just going to click render okay so I've rendered this and as you can tell it's very plain and basic and this is because we haven't actually added in a environment light or any sort of light so we're going to go back out and I've actually imported just an environment light here and I just need to enable it this is also from the same place that we got our textures from Apart from we went on to the HDRI and we've gone down, browsed them, and I just downloaded a few of these and I just tested them out. Um, some really good ones. I think I used, I think it's a city one. I think I used something like that, Cambridge, um, or the overpass. If you just have a quick look, um, download a couple, you can test them out yourself. So if we jump back straight into Houdini, we've enabled this now. And if we quickly render it again, you'll see there's a big, big difference. And I'll be back with you in a second. So already you can see a big, big difference. Uh, you got the light reflecting through the water. Um, you can go back in and you can change a couple of different materials. You could add maybe a second light over here if this is a bit too dark for you guys. Um, you could add another light down the bottom, backlight, and so on and so forth. But with the environment light, it does the whole thing round and it gives it more of a realistic look. Next up, you want to actually come to the out and come to this mantra. We're going to rename this to rock fluid. And we're going to make sure that we've got our frame range. We're going to, uh, I reckon we'll go to 120 so we've deleted the channel there and we've just typed in 120 we're going to make sure our camera one is selected we're also going to make sure that our output is where we need it to go so here i've got it going here make sure it's on exr and make sure the dot at the end is exr as well or lowercase um Everything else you can leave as default. If you come to rendering, we're going to change this and make sure it's six. You can go a little bit higher, but I recommend staying around about six or four, or else your render will take a very, very long time. If you've got a render farm, that's fab. Bump up the numbers. Uh, just be aware that the, um, the file size will end up going up the higher that you make the pixel sample. So that is basically it for this.
Um, make sure that you've got the physical base rendering on. Sometimes it does default as ray tracing. It just, I found that this is a lot quicker for me. Um, but if it is on ray trace, it'll just take a little bit longer, but um, it won't change much of the quality. So I just leave it at the physical base rendering. So you can come down to here and you can enable the depth of field. Um, you can also enable the motion blur. Just be aware, if you enable the motion blur, the render time will go up a lot, lot more. Um, you're probably best off actually adding in the motion blur afterwards uh, in post. So for this exercise, I'm just going to leave these two. Um, what I might do is in a future tutorial is actually go through the whole mantra node as well as the cameras. So we can add in the depth of field as well as the um, motion blur. But for this, everything is sorted if you just save that and click render to disk or the render to disk in background and that is it for this tutorial guys um hopefully it helps you out a little bit if you've got any questions just send me a message and if you've got any tutorials that you want me to create in the future um, that you're struggling on finding or just need to know how to do it then just message me that as well and I'll hopefully get those up soon. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.